Oh, good morning, everyone. So this morning I would like to conclude the description of uh, <coughs> the presence that Abraham Avinu gave to the not happy Lakshim, above all the Nekatura, which we explained following the description on a deeper level of the Desler, it's a four page. 463 of the fifth section of Yahoo. and it says that he gave them presents and sent them to the, to the east, to the far east. So we explain this according to Jewish tradition, as he was brought in the Ramam as Halakha that the Bnei Keturah had the mitzvah of Brit Mila. Sons of, of, of Hagar, Avram Avinu. Just like Avram Avinu made Brit Mila for Ishmael, he was, he was, he was a, a proper son of what was at that time the prophet, the co-wife. And he had the chance to be part of the Son. So, tradition is Keturah, whom he remarried, and Sarah died, and he had, had more children. The children have an obligation to keep with me. Something very surprising. The Ramban had a child, and Keturah had to have. A Jew to have meal until today. But surely all the all the, all the different tribes have become absorbed. The Rambi even when he refers to Amalek, he says there's no pure ethnic definition of Amalek at all. It just says Zeicha Amalek, which we already explained later on next week's Pasha's Pasha Zachor. I mean, those who follow the uh, <coughs> almost suicidal, murderous approach of Amoli. So he said, they could have a duty. And they could tour, I include also the British Mayor. And it's very interesting that since the day, you know, the Muslims keep with Mila. They regard it as being a major aspect of keeping the vision of <coughs> This remains with us. But what happened to the Bnei Keturah? Bnei Ishmael and any <coughs> references in the Tanakh, in the Midrashim, and other sources. Bnei Ishmael, we know today, also even call them. Muslims, you call Bnei Ishmael. <coughs> But they have a certain cultural and uh, a religious background that goes back and connects Ishmael the Tanakh with Muhammad, his descendants, his, his groups that he built up. The Vilekatura are others from Eastern countries. So here on page, page 463, the Rambam, the, 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 the Tesla here brings a Gomorrah from Zabachim, page 62, which uh, in the service some people don't take it so literally, but if you go into it more deeply, it's going to take an important lesson. Tebene Achte de Rabitafen, that's for those who follow, follow, can follow the Hebrew, you've got the sheets there. The nephews of Rabitafen. They sat in front of the tavern whilst he was teaching Torah. Well, no, have on the middle, they didn't open their mouths. Well, they asked questions, they didn't answer. They were not really so interested. The tavern was one of the greatest, Tanaim, 
Because at that particular time, the Tanaim, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Tavun. And he began and wanted to explain this Pasuk when he saw they're not participating in the Shia, which means that it didn't have much interest to participate. He said, by Yosef Avram, we have Isha Ushmo Yochani. So he quoted the Pasuk that after Sarah died and Yitzchak was getting married, then Avram Avinu, he went and took a wife and his name was Yochani. That's why he quoted the Pasuk. But what does it say in the Pasuk? Can you tell me? No, anyone can tell me who's been listening to the Shurim? What does the Pasuk say, Bereshit? By Yosef Abraham, he took a, a, a new wife and her name was Yochani. Is that written in the Chumash? Yochani? We should like, you know, Yochana, Johannes, Yochani. In fact, you won't find the name of Yochani anywhere in the Tanakh. He misquoted on purpose. <clears throat> because he wanted to get them to talk. Of course, the nephews knew, certainly they knew the Chumash by heart, you know, they knew something. So they said, how can you say a Pasuk? You say it says Yochani. It says a Shema Keturah. The Chumash, her name was Keturah. You want to know where the verse is? Okay, we'll be dealing with it. It's Precious chapter 25. Give me the chapter. Yes? <coughs> chapter 25 of Genesis. Abraham took, and Chazal say, she wasn't really a new wife. But his wife whom he divorced, sent away from the home. Sarah said, you can't leave over in this home. But Yitzchak was born. He had to send her away. But uh, she still, she was on a high level in one way. Malachim spoke with her. She, heard her. she, was, given, she was given prophecies concerning what's going to happen to the son Yishmael, Yepere Adam, yeah? more of a wild beast than a human being. Not a human being, but also a wild beast. That is wild ass. You see today, but one press, uh, press the easiest definition of what's going on with this, uh, with the, uh, going on in the, in the 21st century. Man can learn learns lessons. Yeah. So, but he, so he wanted to get, get involved, so therefore they said, Kori Alehem, B'nei Keturah. So he said about his nephews, Rabbi Tafen, you are like the B'nei Keturah. Yeah. You said that, he's quite right, it says B'nei Keturah, but I want to wake you up, you know. So what, what, what is the very unusual situation? But of course, we can it can happen today as well. You know that people, they may be one of the great scholars, and he's got nephews, or he's got distant relatives, who, uh, who had their learns, but, uh, you know, they didn't keep to it. But he invited them, by them joining the Shia, or listening at least. So, you know, they, they took no notice. They sat in the Shia without noticing anything. It also happens. You know, you have something. So you want to wake them up. So you quoted this Pasuk wrongly, on purpose. And Rashi says, Milta He wanted to open their mouths. So you saw that's the way to do it. It's like this says in Shemot, uh, the different types of sons. The one son, Enu Delisho, he can't ask any questions. He's a sort of, he's got a closed mind. You ask him any question? No, no question. It often happens. In my experience, frequently, people have got no question. So then you've got to open his mind. At Patachlo, open it up. That's the purpose of the Seder night. You put down all sorts of unusual customs on the table, even for children, 
Sure, mind to ask questions theoretically, but they find some unusual food on the table eating, and instead of eating normally, you incline yourself down on the left side like that. And ask, what are you doing that for? So people, people have a natural power of curiosity, which it has to be developed. If you want to go into Torah life, you, you can't be a person with a closed mind. So you want to open their mouth. Which is, which is a significant lesson. Some, sometimes, at that level, you thought these people, these youngsters, or they've learned Kumish and Tanakh and so on, then probably they left the yeshiva, didn't want them no more. But he invited them around, he's still his nephews, he's looking to look after them, and he wants to be a car of them. So, so he started discussing a certain subject, and they weren't listening. And they asked no questions. So he misquoted the Pasuk. The call no, to, to, to open their mouth. But he said like this, even see Khatkulish in the Khachamit Slicha Talmud, the sages say, whatever uh, non-learning comments are made by the most learned people, Tamil Khachamin, the highest, you can learn from them. As we, as we, as we all do. I mean the uh, these days, there are thousands of books about the lives, the conversations of the great Israeli. And those who merit it can sometimes even listen in. And perhaps you don't always understand the halakhic discussions, but some of them discuss ordinary matters, as it were. And even from that, you can learn many lessons. I mean, there's so many ordinary words which are quoted, let's say from the Chobos Chaim, from which we can learn enormous lessons about how to behave. That's what you learn from the time of the How they answer, how they don't answer. I'll give you an example. See that for them. It's a great example. It happened recently. You know, the whole the political tumult that's going on. Unfortunately, the head of the wise men of Shas, called Rav Shalom Cohen, or Shiv Rat Yosef, who I was privileged to know well, he was sitting in Sheba recently in Sheba. So Rav Steinemann came to visit him. And, uh, you know, somebody, there's this, this whole discussion at that time, I had it left Shas, you know. <coughs> so, <coughs> so the question was raised, because it wasn't often. Rabbi Steinemann is the head gadol of, let's say, the Ashkenazi, the Haredi parties. And the, and the head gadol of the Sfadi, the place of Rabbi Yosef, is of Sean Cohen. He's the head of the it's wise council of the wise men of, of the Sfadi, the council of wise men of the Ashkenazi. So Rabbi Steinemann, um, Somebody say, raised the question about what, what will he do? What, what is she willing to do about getting Ari Dari back? The whole, whole tumor about it. Ari Dari was a, was a the most brilliant, the, when he started in the Knesset, was a brilliant representative of Sephardi Jewry. Not only Sephardi Jewry, but all the world of Torah. He did great things for everyone, including our Yeshiva and so uh, Including anyone in his time, when he was uh, in, in I think, Minister of Interior, and then he brought against him um, a, uh, in a court case which was uh, based upon false testimony, which we have mentioned before. <coughs> the whole was false testimony, he was put in prison. Anyway, so what he was willing to come back, and then because of certain, certain uh, different approaches, so he left us for a time, and he gave up his, his, his uh, membership of the Knesset. Today he's not a member of the Knesset. He's head of Shas, but not a member of the Knesset. Anyway, so Lav Steinemann was asked, what, what do you, can you not help? So he said, he said, the only thing he said was, Rely 100% on the Gatolim of his father. They must make the decision. And we, we have to 
Sri Parthi, I was saying to the Shri Parthi, they said, I will see, of course he, 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 he very much, uh, as an understand, probably very much in favor of the greatest unity, but he had said the unity of Amisra is dependent upon respecting the approaches of all the tribes. You see the more liberation. The, the unity of the twelve tribes, each one is different, comes that all of them know we've got to work for Hashem, but each one's got its own task. I'll give you an example of where this was not observed when you can understand how, how the reason was not observed, but uh, it led to a lot of problems. Then you know when it was not observed? In the time of the Asmoneans. The Asmoneans were the Kohanim. And the Kohanim belonged to the tribe of Levi. And they established the Asmonean monarchy. They took over the kingship. They thought they could combine kingship with, <coughs> with priesthood. And as a principle, in the Fumash already, so the different tribes. It's the Koalim have their duty and the Shevet Yehuda have their duty. You, don't, you can appoint kings from different tribes as well, but to establish the monarchy, not called certainly after the time of Dutch Hamela, from any tribe to make it a real proper monarchy, you have got the right, the right background. Don't try to combine it with the priesthood. And what happened was, the priesthood became a political poem. The study, what happened in the Second Temple period, that was the really ultimately the destruction. It's part of the concept of sin of fina, hatred without cause. It brought to strife. <coughs> the Romans tried to control the priesthood. There were not many of the high priests who could survive a year in the high priest at the time of the second time. So this is respecting others. The Rabbi Tavan, he really wanted to reveal to them the Vachoch. So therefore he wants to deep. So it's very interesting that Desla here goes deeply into this <coughs> scripture. What's the concept of Nikatura, which carried on until today, not only in Islam, but also with the presence that Abraham sent to the eastern Bnei Kedem, which he populated the Far East. We have already explained this was the development of magic. Very magic type, uh, uh, and Yochum, if you look carefully in the Gemara, in the Gemara you understand anything. You can do it by it says, "Divrei Torah aniyim makom echad v'chirim makom echad." Words of Torah are sometimes poor in one place. You don't know what they mean, but if you go on learning, you'll find that if you look at the same concept anywhere else. In Shas, that's the way how you can explain it. <coughs> and it's marvelous how sometimes there's a cryptic scripture in one part of the Gemara, and the only way you can explain it is by going to a different Masechta entirely. So Yochni, Yochni was a famous witch. And therefore, Bnei Yochni means Bnei Kishon. Because we do find the name Yochni, in a different Gemara. The Gemara and Saito, if I want to say to you in full, it's got a lot to do with all the questions also concerning magic and demons and so on. And we know that even until today, certainly the Indian and Far Eastern religions, they intertwine. If a person studies the primitive sources, certainly intertwined with a lot of magic. I mean, even transcendental meditation, um, which the, they claim is a science, the college of TM, 
the Marishi was always says it's science. But the truth is, it's not science. When we had it, it's not so popular anymore amongst Jews. That I don't see it as a, such a frequent groups of Jews, although there are more Jews in it proportion than Gentiles. But TM, the culture of limitation, <coughs> there's also an organization in Israel, TM. And we had quite a few people who were influenced a bit by it. So I went more deeply into this question, and I met with the head of TM uh, in Israel, the Israeli head. And my main question was, okay, you said it's a science meditation, meditation has its sources in the Torah, meditation. But they have a man mantra, and for them the mantra is of importance. And although perhaps they don't publicize it too much, but anyone who wants to become a teacher of TM, you've got to adopt a particular mantra. So I asked, why do, why do you have this special, special word, which they have to keep on repeating? Why do you choose a special mantra? What different when a person meditates? Well, we believe when a person meditates, he should meditate and it says, Hashem Elokein Hashem Echad, then you should meditate on the name of Hashem. Yeah? It is for direct, but different forms to do with special words that have a real meaning. But you, you say some sort of word, apricadap, whatever it is, and they've got a, each, each person's given his particular mantra by the heads. So why, why particular? And in the, in the end, if you trace it, it goes back to a magical formula, the ways of magic. See, this? Um, they say, they say the mantra's got to fit the person, that the shoe fits the foot. Yeah. So therefore, even Hoskins, there's also Rabbi Yosef, he went to Chuva at the time also, he said it's up in the Zora. Why? Because they're connected. These mantras are connected with with uh, idolatry and superstition. So this is the Bnei Ketura. And you'll see what the, what the this, this Gemara is uh, quite fascinating. And um, I'll just start on it because it's like this. So, the Gemara deals with the question of Uh, there are various people who destroy the world. Tumurabon. The Sula Taylor, a prayerful virgin, who spends a lot of time praying, too much. So why, does she, why, why is she considered? She's constantly praying. Uh, I'll give you an example. Once I knew a, a, a couple, they got married, and the girl. She had in mind, she was going to say to Helen. She said to Helen and said to Philip, non stop, you know what I mean? And she said, oh, she neglected everything else. Well, that's, uh, they destroy the world because you can't build up a marriage with a girl whose whole mind she thinks she's, she's just connecting up with Hashem. And that's one of the dangers, it is sometimes today with the expression of spoilers and so on. You go to the corner, or the garden, or you go to the wood, and the garden, the garden, the garden. And that they neglect their duties as a result. And sometimes it becomes, it becomes a, a psychological problem and worse. So this, we destroy the world. A mono show of it, and the widow it becomes very neighborly with all the other neighbors and goes in and uh, everyone says, Rahman, look on her, but still, as a result, it wants to break up the, the families. Maybe she's an attractive widow, she to go to, 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 to the couples in the area who are happily married, and she said, you know, you've got to invite me, because I've got to If they're a widow, she doesn't, she's so neighborly, so she, she always visits her neighbors too much. The Korbis Lakola Khachot is a minor whose months are not yet complete, which means someone who goes and makes halakhic decisions and he hasn't learned enough. And the horses. So the Gemara says, 
Well, is that really so? Rabbi Yochanan said that we've learned fear of sin from a prayerful maiden. And we, because the, 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 this case is a beautiful girl, and she doubles Hashem all the time, that this is what I'm going to explain soon, that because she's afraid all the time that she may lead men to sin. Because she, she's beautiful and uh, she has to go out sometimes. There are men around and she's afraid she's stimulating people around, around when people sin. <coughs> and we also learn reward from a navelly widow. <coughs> Things like this, the pious, the pious displays of such women often fronts to mask immoral behavior and witchcraft. They adopt this pious displays of being prayerful and neighborly. The people should not scrutinize them and discover their sinfulness. People who exaggerate, let's say, but women who exaggerate of being neighborly as a widow or being um, filled, filled with prayer all the time, the people should think, oh, the holy woman. And, um, uh, but really what they're doing is witchcraft. We'll see what it all means. For the behavior of the widow, who exerted herself more than necessary in order to receive the reward of a mitzvah, that we should explain, we can learn that a person should invest effort in the mitzvah he performs in order to receive greater reward. <coughs> Although one should not perform mitzvah for the sake of reward, you can seek him the reward for the extra effort he invests in the mitzvah. Anyway, I'll have to stop now because um, I can stop early today. But I think I'll, 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 because there are a lot of lessons to learn from this Yochni. Because Yochni, which she was a famous, as it were, famous Sadekas on the outside. Yeah, she used to, uh, she used to, she went to her cases. She, if she prays, then, then whatever health hazards there are, they'll be saved and there are stories told about her but the story told about her really were deceitful on the outside she puts in the camouflage this is Sadekas it's got certain parallels today there are plenty of hopes around people and people who claim that they've got the supernatural qualities to heal anybody yeah, through their prayer but they're not some, some they're even around in, in Israel uh, there are a lot of different groups, and there are many who who don't go to the Kedrele Hatton to get their blessings. They go to people who can, uh, as it were, they're known to be people who can, can, who can produce either through astrology, some of them, and others through their hands, they've got special energy in their hands, mm -hmm. and so on. And they, they, people go to them to, for healing and for blessing. And there's even a situation today where many rich people, uh, they have their favorite uh, magician. You know, there's some, some, some person called it some sort of therapy, but they're authentic. And there's people that sometimes are ignorant, but uh, yeah, they are <coughs> miracle creators. But, in the, but, but really, some of them may have a bit more talents than the average person in certain directions, more energy in their hands than others, but uh, it's, um, it's more to do with, uh, you know, that you can make tests, a lot, uh, 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 you can make tests even, you know, give, you know, like people make tests with placebos, you know. Many people believe today in medicines, you know. I think the medicine heals them. And there are very many medicines that go around <coughs> that the Ministry of Health will not recognize, but people think that these medicines or these health are really are, they're fine. And uh, often they live a strength. It's also a form of modern day magical performances in the world of healing, in the world of 
financial success and so on. So, on all this, Taylor says, you go to the Nevi'im or to the Chachamim, but don't go to, to, to superstitious approaches of older periods and even our own period. Okay, I'll leave questions.